This is why my business fell in the Dominican Republic. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new to the channel, welcome. If you like Dominican culture, learning how to cook Dominican food, learning a little bit Spanish and see a little fashion, you are in the right place, so welcome. And if you also would like to support my channel, go ahead and join my Patreon page. And in today's video, I'm giving you the reasons why my business fell in the Dominican Republic. I know some of you guys are looking to open up a business in the Dominican Republic. And just like United States, the same planning and research are required to open up a business in the Dominican Republic. Although these reasons are related to my business in the Dominican Republic, they also are related to any business around the world. So before I give you the reason, let me tell you a little something about the business that way you can understand some of the challenges that we face. The business that we have was a restaurant. And when I say we, the restaurant wasn't just mine, it was me and my husband. And the main area of that restaurant was women's. And we did have 21 flavors that was made from scratch. So he used to make the 21 flavors if they were the best win in the whole world. I can tell you that in the whole world. So in 2015, we moved back to the Dominican Republic and we wanted to start a restaurant business. And the reason why we choose to start a wing restaurant it was because we wanted to bring something that was uh, American style, I mean fast food style business, but at the same time we wanted something that wasn't oversaturated in the market. Like we have a lot of pizzas, hamburger place, we have fried chicken, which is Victorina, and also Pica Pollo, which is owned by Chinese that you can find in every corner. But what you cannot find is different type of flavor wings like you can find here. So we wanted to bring that new to the market. So we opened up the business in August 2015. And after that, here are the challenges that we face. Going forward, number one, location. Have you ever heard the term location, location, location? Yes, that is true. The location that we had it was a very good area. We were located in Bella Vista. But the plaza, or the place that we choose for our business, it wasn't the best location for our business. So the location that we choose was a college campus. I know that you say, wow, that is great. It's the same thing that we thought. But the problem was that the college campus in the Dominican Republic are not like the college campuses in the States. Unlike the United States, the students in the Dominican Republic don't live on campus. So therefore, they don't spend a lot of time on campus. We have most of the students that take classes during the daytime, and we have a few students that come at night time. We did most of our business during lunch time, which it was from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we did have a lot of business during the time. And the second part of our business was from 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. And it was kind of different, the type of, uh, we would say you no know, crowd of people that we have because during the night time, most of the time they used to have just have a beer or appetizers. And to be honest, that was very doable because we did have a lot of business during lunch time and we did have business at night time. But the problem was Saturdays. It was a cold time. It was no students around on Saturday. So the only business that we had was people that was passing by, people that used to live in the area and they wanted to pass and stop by, sit in the restaurant and eat. And we did, we, it was some other business in the same plaza that was facing the same problem that we did. There was no people to serve the food. And on Sundays, we didn't open on Sunday because we needed a day off. And besides, we used to buy inventory on Sunday. And here is another problem. Holidays, well, almost every day is a holiday in the Dominican Republic, but that wasn't the real problem. The real problem was the college in the Dominican Republic are four quarters, and every four months they have a break that is between three and four weeks, and then was summer break and Christmas break, and those breaks was even uh, longer than the regular uh, break every four months. And during that time, the business was really, really, 
really low and it was very hard to turn a profit. So understand that just because you are in a great area, that doesn't mean it's a good location for your business. I wish you would know more research about how the weekends work and how the, the dynamic of the schedule work in a college campus. Number two, lack of marketing. Like within any business that people are not familiar with, you have to educate people to understand the kind of business that you have and what type of product you offer. And the way that you do that is to advertise them. And we didn't have enough money to advertise. We pay some advertisement, we print out some flyers, we pass it around, we put it in some people's doors, but still that wasn't enough. So we thought because we were bringing a new product to the market that people would be open to try something different. Unlike here in the United States, when people see a new type of restaurant, they will be trying something different for lunch. Dominicans are different. They pretty much eat the same thing every day. So if you are not constantly advertising, you will not get any new business. So remember, we were in a college campus, so we didn't have to advertise to the students. But if you wanted to get some new customer, we need to have the budget to advertise. And we didn't have enough capital to advertise. And I remember it was another new type of restaurant in St. Plaza, which was a Lebanese restaurant. And he was facing the same issue that we was facing. He was bringing a new product and it just didn't work for him. He was even having less customer than we were because no, too many Dominicans know anything about Lebanese food. At least they know alitas, which is wing. And they, they know what is that, so they're gonna eat it. But Lebanese food, no, it just didn't work for him. So just know, before you start in a business, especially introducing a new product in the Dominican Republic, you better have some advertising money. Number three is starting up too big, too fast. Like I mentioned before, we were in a great location. And a great location comes with what? Great price. Our brain was in dollars. It was $1,300. You're kidding me. And that includes mainly. In average area, the rent probably would be $500. Right there, our overhead went up $800. So if you hear me saying our rent was in dollars, if we were receiving in pesos, so by the time we had to pay rent, we have to do the exchange for whatever the rate was at that moment. So in that case, we were losing money because we had to pay extra to exchange from pesos to dollars. So guys, if you are renting a location with the payment is in dollars, try to negotiate to pay in pesos because if you are receiving pesos and the value of the dollar go up, you're going to be losing money every month. Another example of going too big too fast, it was the money that we spent redesigning the inside and the outside of the place. We spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars just fixing the patio, building a bar, neon sign, paint. We spend lots of money before we even start serving our first customer. This is, was one of the biggest lessons that we learned that we shouldn't spend that much money at the beginning starting off. Number four, reserve cash. We did not have enough reserve capital. This means that the money that we make that day, we use it to buy inventory for next day. You should always have at least six months to a year reserve cash for your overhead and inventory. Number five, pricing. When we started off, we did not price our product accordingly. For example, the experts say that you should price your product three times the food cost, and we did not do that. And the reason why is because we were trying to be competitive. At the same time, understand that our main customer were college students. A college student do not have too much money to spend. We changed our price three times in a short period of time, and this is not good for a business. And the reason why, because it wasn't profitable for us. And after we changed the price three times, I don't think the price was what it should be for us to be a profitable business. Having we changed the price again, I don't think that the student would be able to pay that price. And I address it again. A great area doesn't mean it's a great location for your business. Number six, offering too many things. Have you heard the saying, 
if you chase two rabbits, you will lose them both. Yes. We initially started off selling burgers and wings. Then we added salad, tacos, hot dogs, wraps, and pizza. This wasn't a good idea. We thought that the more items we offer, more people would come. But that is not true. What is truth is the more items you offer, the more inventory you need. And the more inventory you need, more money you will spend. So when you are starting up a business, you should focus on one or two things. And the last one, number seven, creating a job instead of a business. We quit our job with the intention to be successful entrepreneurs. Instead, we ended up buying ourselves a job. Our biggest mistake was that we didn't hire the proper staff to work on the restaurant. That would allow us to work on the business side of the restaurant. Instead, we employed ourselves from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. working in the restaurant. I'm all Not what we had in mind. And this is the second biggest lesson that we learned. When you are building a business, you should focus on working on the business instead of in the business. And having said all that, we will offer to open another 12 more restaurants. And the person that offered all this deal was the owner of the location. One day he stopped at the restaurant and he loved the concept. So he offered us to be a partner, but he just wanted to be a financial partner. One of the problems was that we didn't have enough established credit to get the rest of the location. For my first restaurant, my brother had to go sign for us to get that location. So he wasn't being able, he won't be able to sign for another 12 location. And the partner, he just wanted to be, like I said before, a financial partner. So for that reason, we have to back up out of the deal. And after we back up the deal, a few months after, we decided to close out the restaurant and at the end of 2016 we came back to United States and we came back here to Florida. It was kind of disappointing that we weren't able to follow through with the deal but in that moment under the circumstances it was not doable. If you ask me if I would do it again of course but under different circumstances knowing what I know now I would put it in a different area. Instead of Santo Domingo I would put it in a tourist area. First it would be cheaper and then second, I would know how to educate people about the product. So guys, who is ready to go back for the second time into the restaurant business with us? A specifically wing business. Leave a comment down below. That is all what I have today. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.